The future of any community depends on its youth. In Ottumwa, we encourage all kinds of activities for our young people. At the annual Scout Jamboree, the whole town turns out to honor them. The boys themselves put on a colorful display. Governor Loveless and other state leaders attend to show the importance they place in our youth. It is through youth organizations like the Boy Scouts that our young folks first learn the meaning of community responsibility and come to appreciate the freedoms that serve as the very basis of our community and national life. We're a friendly community and freedom from fear is one of the first freedoms we learn to take for granted. The policeman on the corner is not the agent of a suspicious and hostile state. He is a friend, one of our neighbors helping us to protect our rights. Another fundamental freedom that we take pretty much for granted now is the freedom we enjoy at voting time to elect our leaders by democratic ballot without intimidation or threat of reprisal. We enjoy the freedom of equality and fair play for all. We recognize no social distinctions between classes. We enjoy the rights of free working men. We have the privilege of teaching our children the ways of a free people and providing for all a good opportunity to receive a proper education. These are our freedoms, and protected by them from grade school to graduation, our young men and women are training themselves for the future. And along with the learning comes spiritual guidance too. For as with all free people, we are never far out of the sight of God. Perhaps the biggest freedom of all is our right to worship as, when, and where we please, according to the dictates of our conscience. In Ottumwa, with a population of approximately 40,000, we have over 30 churches of all denominations. We have a lot to be thankful for, and our churches are usually pretty well filled. This Sunday morning service gives us a chance to, of course, to visit with our neighbors and make new friends. There's a good deal more to be said about the way we live in Ottumwa. For one thing, it's fun to live here. We enjoy life. These quiet pleasures are important to us, and it would be hard for us to imagine life being otherwise. And as always, the responsibility for preserving the way of life that is ours falls on the young men of our community. They face a future far richer than any generation before them. Their stake in life has never been so high. For them, as they approach maturity, begins a time of responsibility. And for most of them, the biggest immediate responsibility they must face is military duty. Helping them to discharge their military obligation with as little interruption to their private lives as possible 
is the job of Sergeant Sheely and myself. They call us recruiters, but counselors would be a better word. Our job is to visit all young men of military age and explain to them the Army's program. With the cooperation of our education department, we carry the Army's message into our high schools and answer directly the questions uppermost in young men's minds. We tell them that every American generation has been called up for military service after trouble broke out. The idea today is to prevent and deter war by being strong all the time. How do you defend millions of Americans? One way is to have a big standing army. The American way is to have a small standing army backed up by trained reserves. If a boy enlists, his time of service remains the same, but he can choose the branch of the army he would like to serve in and can split his duty up in any one of several ways. High school graduates who enlist can pick their own technical training, everything from radar to medicine or photography to finance. Some boys can take advantage of a new ruling, which permits them to join the local Army Reserve or National Guard outfits and serve out their military obligation in their own hometown. Here they will learn how to become soldiers. The local airport becomes, for them, a parade ground. They must learn all phases of training, from foot drill to communications. Maintenance of vehicles, and operation of weapons. Here, too, they learn a little of the ways of army life in the field. Under the watchful eyes of instructors, they learn how to assemble, clean, and use their weapons. They become modern Minutemen, carrying on the traditions of Atumwa's famed Company G Rainbow Division. Truly a ready army in reserve. Today, the army is a permanent part of every town and city, and a proud part. A sober symbol of strength standing amid the familiar pleasures of life's routine. A symbol of the obligation that faces all of us in one way or another. The young men to whom that obligation has the most direct meaning become familiar with our recruiting offices. Through the doors of these offices, too, pass the loved ones and parents of men and women already in service. Policewoman Louise Crooks drops by the office to tell me her son Jim has received an appointment to West Point. Dr. Kesey, the dentist, joins us long enough to let me know his daughter Catherine is doing fine in the wax. Every day there is word from someone we know serving in the armed forces. The people here have come to accept the Army as part of their way of life. Even more gratifying to me is that they now seek me out as a friend. They know I can help their sons over the most difficult years of decision in their lives. Young men like these stand poised to take the step from adolescence to maturity. For such young men, this step is the most important one in the world. It is a giant step, and a boy does not take it quickly. There is no moment when a boy suddenly turns into a man. The process to maturity is a gradual one, and no one can place the precise time when the transfer to manhood occurs. But one thing is known about it. The step into maturity is taken at that age when a boy is eligible for military service. For Gerald Brunk, this is the moment of decision. Everything has been discussed. He has the information he needs, and he knows what there is to know about the obligation ahead of him. Military duty must be faced. Now the question is his alone. Before him, the pathway to maturity and manhood beckons. Now it must be his choice.
This is the story of just one Iowa farm boy and his town, its fields, its families, and its future. But it is more than that, for this is America. This is our heritage, this land, this way of life, this concept of freedom. In all young men, this nation now puts its trust. Through them, in service to God and country, it shall forever remain free. Your army today is indeed embedded in the life of America, inseparably linked to the welfare of its citizens, integrated into the pulse beat of its communities. Hundreds of communities across the broad face of the nation, varying in size and character, but all of them, like Ottumwa, Iowa, citadels of the way of life we treasure. Now, this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official television report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. <laughs>